We learned how to count on beats and off beats in Beethoven's Ode to Joy and then Brahms' Lullaby. Then we learned how to count quarter beats, and then we even learned how to count eighth beats. So that is basically taking each beat, splitting it in two to get half beats, splitting those in two to get quarter beats, and then sometimes splitting those in two to get eighth beats. But what if instead we wanted to split each beat into three? Then we would get what is called a compound time signature. And the technical term is not as important as being able to recognize a compound time signature and then knowing how to use it. And one example of a compound time signature in my intermediate classical course is Chopin's Nocturne Opus 9, number 2. So if you look at the time signature, the time signature is 12-8, which means that there are 12 eighth notes in each bar. However, we don't count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That would be too much. If you look at the left hand of bar 1, you can see that those 12 eighth notes are actually split into four groups of three. So there are actually only four beats in a bar, but each beat is split into three rather than two. So four times three is 12. That means if we play through bar one and count the beats, we get one, two, three, four, one. And then each of those beats is split in three. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, and so on. So that is 12, 8. There are not 12 beats in a bar. You divide 12 by 3 to get the number of beats in the bar. So 12 divided by 3 is, uh, oh yeah, that's right. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so there are 4 beats in a bar. Each beat is split into 3. However, 12-8 is not a very common time signature. A much more common compound time signature is 6-8, and that is the time signature of Puccini's O Mio Bebino Caro from Gianni Schicchi. And the rhythmic pattern is easiest to see here if we jump ahead to bars 17 to 18. So if you look again at the left hand in bars 17 to 18, you can see that the 6 eighth notes in each bar, so again, the time signature is 6-8, that's 6 eighth notes in each bar, and those six eighth notes are split into two groups of three. So there are two beats in each bar and each beat is split in three. One, two, one, two. And each of those beats is split in three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three, one. And this piece also brings up something very important. If we look at bars one to two, let me just play through those counting the beats only. One, two, one, two. It's the opening, very famous tune. You probably recognize it. Um, so if we look at bar two, we just have two notes in the right hand, that E and that D, and they're taking up one beat each. Let me just play it again. So focus on the right hand in bar two. One, two, one, two. So each of those notes is taking up one beat and each of those notes is a dotted quarter note. Now until now we've been used to one beat being simply a quarter note, but in this case in a compound time signature like 12-8 or 6-8, each beat is made up of three, uh, three eighth notes and three eighth notes are equal to a dotted quarter note. So just to recap that arithmetic, two eighth notes would be equal to one quarter note, but uh, three eighth notes is one and a half times as many eighth notes. So we put a rhythm dot after the quarter note to get a dotted quarter note. So if you are playing a piece in six eight or 12 eight, uh, a one beat note is gonna be a dotted quarter note, not simply a quarter note. So actually you can look at uh, bar one now. So, that B in the right hand, that is simply a quarter note, but it is only taking up two thirds of a beat. That F sharp is taking up the last third of the beat. Each beat is made up of three eighth notes. It's two thirds, two, two, three. So remember, if you're reading a piece in six eight, you're not counting quarter notes as beats, you're counting dotted quarter notes. One, let's count uh, all the sub beats. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. So again, just to recap, we are counting two beats in a bar. Each beat is split into three. One, two, three, two, two, three. So each beat is a dotted quarter note. There is one more example of a compound 
time signature in my intermediate classical course, and that is the very famous The Swan by Camille Saint-Saëns. Never quite sure how to pronounce that surname. You know, my French pronunciation is, is not as good as my Italian. Um, this has the time signature 6-4 rather than 6-8. It's kind of unusual. But that simply means uh, that uh, just as with the Puccini or Mio Babino Caro, there are only two beats in each bar and each beat is split in three. But in this case, each beat is split into three quarter notes. And this is easiest to see if you look at bar two, the right hand. So this is the very famous tune. Let's add the left hand. Am I playing the right key? Yes, I am. So there, one, two, two beats in the bar. Each beat is split into three quarter notes. One, two, three, two, two, three, one. So the rule here is that if the top number of the time signature is nine, hold on, is six, nine, or 12, then there are not six, nine, or 12 beats in each bar. You divide the top number by three to get the number of beats in each bar and each of those beats is split in three. So if the top number is six, there are two beats in a bar, each split into three. So again, you're taking the six as the top number, you're dividing it by three to get the number of beats in the bar. So you get two, and each beat is split into three. Um, nine as a top number in a time signature is very unusual. We don't have any examples of it anywhere on my website at the moment. Uh, but you would have three beats in a bar, each beat would be split in three. Can't think of a famous example of a, a piece in line eight, but there must be some. And if the top number is 12, as in the Chopin Nocturne, again, you divide 12 by three to get four beats in a bar, each beat is split into three. So they are compound time signatures.